everyone, it is Erica back on the Cross Remarker YouTube channel and today I have a super fun experiment in mine! Eep! So obviously at the time of filming this I wasn't sure where this was gonna go but I gotta tell you now that I've seen what uh, what kind of came out of it I am super super stoked and I will definitely be doing this again. So my friend Martina, who actually happens to be on the Crossing Meraki uh, team, she is the one who, uh, one of the ones who uh, does all like the color coordination or like color combos, like the chemistry behind the colors on Lindy's gang. And she super, super kindly sent me some of the magicals uh, to try. And oh my goodness. Now, if you like a colorful, shimmery colors, like, vibrant colors. Holy cannoli are these for you. Oh yes. Oh yes. I mean, just, I mean, look at the magic that is happening on screen right now. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning, my friend. Yes, it's going to get better. I took a big, huge piece of watercolor paper. This is a European A3 size, which is, um, I mean, you can see it on the screen. It's almost like 14 inches wide and like 11 or 12 um in width so it's it's really really big and i thought you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna play and kind of see what happens and i also got my heat tool now so i'm trying to like set the colors in between you know to make sure that they don't muddle too much and uh, you know because nothing kind of ruins your colorful day as much as like colors pulling together and creating like brown mud even if it's sparkly mud it's still brown so i am um, i'm trying to kind of dry all the colors in between so that you know yes i want them to blend together but i also want them to like stand out on their own and oh my goodness let me tell you about this teal and this blue oh, 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 oh. I mean, blue is already my favorite color, but looking at these just kind of swirling around there, I was like, mm-hmm, oh yeah, those are my colors. So yeah, I, uh, I added quite a lot of those around the edges to just kind of like look at them and admire. And uh, I know the focus on this on my heat tool at the moment, but honestly, I, I gotta say, drying the colors in between adding them made a, such a difference because I, I like the fact that you can see like all the individual colors as well but that they have that kind of softness and blending together and every now and again can you catch that shine it's like ha ah. so this is the finished like completely dry piece look at that shimmer and shine don't tell me this is not fantastic I will not hear it so if I get any comments in the uh, like in the box down below saying now uh, eh it's all that, all that. I will, yes, I will strongly, strongly disagree with you. So I am going to use this super cute rainbow mini slimline die cut. So I'm going to cut down this massive piece so that I get as many as I can out of it. So really, I mean, what I should have done is I should have like gone from edge to edge with, with this piece, but I, um, for some reason didn't. I mean, I was already on a roll. Why didn't I do that? Another mystery to solve, but that's for another day. So I'm uh, trying to get as many panels out of this as possible. And uh, I, I must admit that I got more than I thought. Yeah. So I'm going to be using these in many, many, many different ways. So some I'm going to cut directly, like I'm doing here right now. And uh, some I'm going to add you know with white cardstock and layer with glitter cardstock and oh my goodness there were so many so many fun ways of uh, using not only this die cut itself but also the um the, this big old panel that i made so one of the first things i did was you know i cut out a load of um actually yeah uh, i kind of lost count how many i've cut out just because i have um i've gone layers i've gone inlaid i've gone you know on top behind i have added colors through all of the pieces i've added on top it's just yeah as i said so so many ways of using this um this die cut with fun 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 colorful backgrounds so one um here i was thinking oh you know maybe i'll uh, throw that away and then i was like no idea idea came's came's ideas came fast and furious so i decided to um try a few out and uh, i must admit you know what not a single one of the, the techniques that i tried on the ways of adding 
these panels to my backgrounds was a fail. I love how every single one of them turned out. How is that? that I mean, that hardly ever happens. And not to me anyway. Do, does it to you? What is your secret in that case? I want to know. But here, as you can see, I am puzzling. I am just having a bit of fun here and there. Like, oh, where's what going to go? And this and that. And uh, one thing I will say, though, that the, um, the kind of arches in the die cut are very, very, very thin. So if you want to use those, do grab yourself a little bit of press and seal or some low tack wide washi tape so that you can keep everything in place because trying to figure out which piece goes where is a bit tricky. Ask me how I know. No, really, ask me. <laughs> there was a couple of times where I put out or popped out the pieces thinking, yeah, yeah, I won't need those. And then I was like, ah, oh, I do need those. And then it was a bit of a nightmare trying to get them back in, yes. So it was just easier to die cut another piece and keep those pieces, yes. So hence all of the like layers that I am adding to uh, to this card here as well. But here I was thinking, you know what? I'm going to do the like the inlay bits of the, the negative piece inside. And then I wanted to add all of these uh, arches to the, sh um, like to the shadow part. So you can see up there in the corner, like I've just done the teeniest, tiniest little little bit up there in the left hand corner. And then we're going to add all of these arches to those like negative spaces so that it gives the impression basically of like a really, really colorful rainbow and cloud. And then you can see the arches rather than, you know, the arches are white rather than colorful. Does that make sense? I will show you once this is finished and then hopefully it will make sense. But so with this, I got to stress again. I know I keep saying it in almost every single video, but liquid glue is key. You must use a liquid glue. So you have a little bit of extra time to not only poke things through and like I'm doing here, and then also to kind of shift things around a little bit, just in case it goes a little bit wonky because you know, it just, if you add a permanent glue right away, like um, you can always use like double-sided tape and then you die cut and then, you know, it goes where it goes. There is no changing double-sided tape once it goes down. So I wanted to have that flexibility of being able to, in case something kind of slipped as I was taking off the, uh, the die cut piece or whether they just, they just kind of like fell out or something, I wanted that extra second or two just to kind of like push everything back into place and make sure that it's actually looking even. So, cause I know personally, if I was doing all of this and then I realized that one of those arches was super, super wonky and like just looking completely out of place, that is the one thing that I will be able to see on that card. And that just kind of ruins it for you, doesn't it? I mean, even if you send it to someone, they're not going to see it. I mean, they might see it, but they're not going to think, Oh yeah, she really did a boo-boo there. How dare she send me this card, you know? But it's just one of those things I think that sometimes as card makers, we kind of overly focus on. So yes, cannot say it enough. And I will say it again and again and again until you're so sick of it. And you're like, yes, Eric, I know liquid glue. It's the key. But it really is. So there we have it. But here again, we are going to um, take the piece where we've actually used the, the arches on our left hand piece and then we have our kind of positive piece. So we're going to add that onto a colorful background there and then we're just going to trim off the excess. And then don't throw away any of that like uh, cardstock that you trim off. So anything that is pretty and colorful, make sure you keep it because you never know when you might need to like just die cut something like a word die or a little shape or something. And then you have a really fun, colorful piece ready to go. It couldn't be easier. And this way you also reduce your crafty waste because crafty waste is right up there with like food waste. Yes. So the negative piece here, we're going to add that on top of this one. And we're going to basically keep adding like pieces to, to that piece. So this is going to get really nice and thick. And here, what we're going to do is we are going to take this whole shebang and we're going to turn this over. And then we're going to take, so this is a glitter cardstock. So this is white glitter cardstock. This is from Hero Arts itself. It doesn't shed the glitter, which is brilliant. I have been around long enough so that, you know, glitter cardstock used to be that thing where, you know, as soon as you, you, you didn't even touch it with the scissors, you looked at it and it just kind of went poof 
and a cloud of glitter fell off. So this stuff is brilliant. You don't um, end up with glitter all over the place. And here you can see on the back. So the reason I use the press and seal here is because I didn't want to just put like a whole piece of glitter cardstock on the back to kind of get it shiny through the arches because that's really wasteful, you know, not, not good. So I am trying to kind of cut down pieces so that they will fit perfectly over those or like behind the arches so that when we turn this over, because nobody's going to see what's on the back, are they? No, nobody's going to see that. So um, on the front, you're going to see all of the glittery goodness kind of shining through that rainbow. And here as well, because I realized ooh, I've only added the glitter cardstock to the arches themselves, this is going to be a little bit wonky. So I wanted to try to avoid anything kind of warping, falling out of where it's supposed to go. So I'm puzzling extra little pieces of cardstock uh, into like the holes to make sure that this is extra steady and um, strong so that it's not gonna you know it's not gonna warp it's not going to kind of sag once you stick it onto a uh, card base it's just going to be pretty and shimmery and solid it's for occasions like this I save basically all my uh, cardstock scraps because you just never know when you're gonna need a little teeny teeny tiny piece to just go on the back of something where nobody will be none the wiser what that is colored cardstock or something you scribbled on or whatever so make sure you keep maybe not to like an excessive point but some anyway so after adding uh, glue to the back of this we're gonna, gonna add this to a uh, card base and then we're going to peel the reveal i mean you can see through the prison seal so it's not really that much of a reveal but we're gonna peel this off and then just trim off the excess at the top there. And then um, there was a teeny tiny piece that didn't kind of stick down. So we're gonna do a little bit of glue surgery. And then that is basically done. Um, so then we are going to keep uh, moving on. So here you can see I have got some pieces and my uh, press and seal. So these have been picked up from another background. So here we're going to try to keep these perfectly in place, hence the press and seal. And we're going to add a little bit of glue into the, instead of adding it to the pieces on the press and seal, we're going to add the glue into where we're going to actually put the pieces. So uh, hopefully it will be a little bit cleaner. So, but do make sure that you don't use too much because when you put those pieces down, if you press a teeny tiny bit too hard, it's going to just squeeze out and make a giant mess. So try to be adding enough glue so that it sticks, uh, but don't add too much so that it makes a mess. So um, here I clearly changed tactic because um, I uh, decided to add glue to the piece on uh, the press and seal. And now that I think back, I probably thought, you know what, I'm going to try it both ways and see which one worked the best. And I, I would say that adding it directly to the uh, um, to the pieces on the press and seal was the way to go because this is what I kept on doing. So here um, we are going to again just add a little bit and very very gentle. There was a piece here that kind of fell off a little bit so do have some tweezers on hand so that you can rescue any little flyaway pieces as well because these are so tiny so if you lose one you know it, it will be very noticeable if you don't have that one in so be sure to keep an eye or press and seal all your pieces so that they don't go walkabouts. And then just finishing off this last few little bits and pieces here, it is a little bit kind of, you know, you do have to finagle a little bit and it does require patience, which again, I am not always the best at patience, but for some reason when it comes to crafting, I, I find myself kind of surprised at the level of stuff that I will do and not think that that is crazy. Um, whereas like in real life, <laughs> it's, it, things must be a little bit more efficient. So yeah, I don't know it, things are crazy, but I uh, must admit that having tried all of these different techniques and ways of adding, you know, glitter or color or arches or backgrounds or whatever, I've had a really, really, really fun time. And I've ended up with some fantastic backgrounds, if I may say so myself. So this is the one where I just kept sort of piling on those pieces that like the negative pieces. This one is super shimmery. It's got the glitter cross up behind the, the rainbow. This one is just rainbows on, you know, super, super colorful. 
This one has got the inlaid rainbow pieces. So these ones are actually the ones from this one here. So I didn't want to let those go to waste. And uh, because I added the glitter cardstock to the back of that one, you know, I was like, I got to use those for something. So I have managed to use almost every single scrap from every single card. And this is the final one. So I added uh, glitter cardstock to this one as well. And as you can see, it's kind of, it's like backing. So you, it almost gives a little bit of a 3D effect. So I really like that. And then this background here, I have just kind of loosely ink blended some um, peacock blue atelier ink, uh, um, ink onto a card base. And then I splattered a little bit of, um, I think it was liquid uh, pixie dust with mixed in with some uh, shark tooth reinker, just to kind of create like silvery sparkles. Um, and then I, I'm just gonna glue this down and then we're gonna add Misty on top to make sure that all of the pieces actually stick to the card base. And then we're gonna have a look at the Magic Day little stamp set. So this is super cute and perfect for these rainbow shimmery um, backgrounds. I mean, look at this cute little guy. He's so cute. Yes. So I've stamped up a sentiment from uh, this stamp set. So I have done a little bit of stamp surgery. <laughs> I know, I actually cut one of these stamps in there. But I, I did it because I want card saying, have a magical birthday. So I, I thought that was kind of perfect for uh, for this card. But that is it from me for today. I I hope you've enjoyed this roller coaster. And uh, let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. And I will see you very, very soon again. Bye for now.